We've all heard the story of Noah's Ark, the stories of the Epic of Gilgamesh. These stories form the core of nearly every ancient civilization's lore. They speak of monumental events that reshape societies of darkness, followed by rebirth. How long has civilization endured, and how many times has it faced a reset? In the Judeo-Christian narrative, God, angered by humanity's sins, commands Noah to build an ark, large enough for his family and pairs of every creature on earth. When the promised flood arrives, it wipes out all life except those aboard the ark. After the waters recede, the ark rests atop a mountain, symbolizing a fresh start for humanity. The story not only emphasizes divine wrath, but also showcases themes of faith and survival. Noah and his family, as the sole human survivors, become the origins of the current human race, reflecting the belief in divine mercy amid catastrophe. Long before Noah, Utnapishtim's story in the Epic of Gilgamesh recounts a similar flood. Recorded on twelve stone tablets, this tale narrates how Gilgamesh, a Sumerian king, seeks immortality after the death of a friend. He meets Utnapishtim, who survived a great flood sent by the gods. Napishtim built a ship called the Preserver of Life, saving his family and all species of creations. This narrative explores not only the themes of survival and divine intervention, but also the quest of eternal life, emphasizing humanity's struggle with immortality and the lessons learned from calamity. But this story can be found elsewhere in the Aztec tales. The Aztec flood story diverges dramatically, featuring Titlacoan, who warns a man named Nata and his wife Nena of an impending flood. They hollow out a cypress tree where they are sealed inside and allowed to eat only one ear of maize each. Unlike other narratives, the people are transformed into fish rather than perishing. After the flood, Nata and Nena disobey and eat fish, resulting in Titlacoan turning them into dogs. This tale emphasizes regeneration and the creation of a new world populated with fish and dogs, offering a unique perspective on survival and divine punishment. In Greek mythology, Deucalion and Pyrrha are chosen by Zeus to survive a great flood that destroys the Pelasgians. After nine days of relentless rain, their ark rests atop Mount Parnassus. Seeking guidance on how to repopulate the earth, they sacrifice to Zeus, who instructs them to throw stones over their shoulders. The stones thrown by Deucalion become men, while those thrown by Pyrrha become women. This clever resolution to the problem of repopulation underscores themes of sacrifice and the intertwining of divine favor with human destiny. In Hindu tradition, the tale of Manu is unique. Rather than being visited by a deity, Manu is warned by a fish, which in some tellings is the god Vishnu. The fish instructs Manu to build a boat to survive the impending deluge. He ties his boat to the fish, which guides him to safety atop a mountain. After the waters recede, Manu performs a ritual sacrifice from which a woman arises from the sea, allowing Manu and his daughter to repopulate the earth. This narrative highlights cooperation between humanity and divinity and underscores the themes of renewal and moral duty. The Buddhist tale of Samudha Vanija Jataka depicts a village of dishonest carpenters who, after being despised, decide to build a ship to escape their troubles. They sail to an island but ignore the warnings of spirits to maintain cleanliness. As a result, the spirits flood the island. One wise carpenter builds a ship, while the foolish remain behind. When the flood comes, only the wise escape, reinforcing themes of foresight and moral responsibility. In Chinese flood myths, there is a complex relationship between humanity and the divine. In one story, a farmer captures a thunder god, but his children release him. The thunder god warns them of a great flood and provides a cord for refuge. The siblings become the only survivors navigating the challenges of repopulation afterward. 
Different versions of this tale grapple with the incest taboo, as the brother and sister either complete challenges or create humans from clay. These narratives highlight family loyalty and the moral dilemmas posed by survival. Norse mythology presents a stark contrast with the stories of Ymir, the frost giant. When Odin and his brother kills Ymir, the blood that spills floods the earth. Only one frost giant, Burglmir, and his wife survive, floating on an ark made by Ymir's body. This grim origin story emphasizes the chaotic and violent nature of creation, suggesting that life emerges from destruction and bloodshed, a reminder of the harsh realities faced by the Norse people. In Native American lore, the story of Wayna Buzhu illustrates resilience after catastrophe. The Great Spirit unleashes a deluge due to humanity's transgressions, with only Wayna Buzhu surviving on a raft. As the waters rise, he seeks mud from the depths to rebuild the earth. Various animals attempt to retrieve the mud but fail until a small coon succeeds. This narrative highlights the importance of community and collaboration in overcoming adversity and the creation of new life from the remnants of the old world. The aboriginal story of Tidalic, the frog, provides a whimsical yet profound flood narrative. Tidalic, very thirsty, drinks all the water in the land, causing a devastating drought. The remaining animals convene to devise a plan to make him laugh, hoping to release the water he consumed. When the eel makes Tidalic laugh, water floods the land, restoring balance. This tale emphasizes the interconnectedness of all living things and showcases the power of unity and cooperation in overcoming challenges. These flood myths, rich in narrative and symbolism, remind us of humanity's vulnerability and resilience. Scholars suggest that many of these stories could be rooted in real geological events, such as massive flooding at the end of the last ice age. As we confront climate change and rising sea levels today, the echoes of these ancient deluges resound louder than ever, urging us to learn from the past and navigate the future with wisdom and caution. Now the question we started with, were how long has civilization endured and how many times has it faced a reset? But now the big question is, will there be another catastrophic flood? With increased deforestation, climate change and rising sea levels, we seem to be headed in that direction potentially creating a new flood story of our very own. <laughs>